Philip, the box cab diesel, is a young and sprightly engine. He is also very playful and confident, and can often get a rise out of some of the engines without exactly meaning to. Whoa, gangway! Box cab coming through the yard! Oh, Pa! What a nuisance! Despite the mixed reviews, he has a good work ethic and is always keen to impress. It was the bigger engines who had requested a new pilot after all, and beggars can't be choosers. Perhaps Philip could be the Knapford Station pilot one day, but it was clear now that he still had a lot to learn. Hello, Philip. Could you collect my trucks, please? I mean, if you don't mind. You got it, yellow engine! <laughs> please, call me Molly. Molly, got it! Anyways, check this out! Look at me go! <laughs> I'm watching, I'm watching. As Philip set to work, he caught the eye of a certain Pennsylvania Berkshire who could not believe his eyes. <laughs> well, what do we have here? A Pennsylvania box cab. Where do you hail from, stranger? Oh, so nice to know there's another Pennsy here. I'm from Philly. Philly? So I reckon you've never been to Pittsburgh? Ugh, no, never! <laughs> Well, you can thank your lucky stars for that. Oh my. Is Pittsburgh really that bad? I don't have the slightest clue of what that is. So, you're the new shunter, I assume. <laughs> I sure am. So, how long have you been here? Uh, give or take eight years. I love it. I was really surprised when I saw you here. You're such a big engine. You're almost too big for so Oh, shock. Uh, <laughs> uh, nah. Well, well, I'm so happy to see someone I can recognize. Every engine on this railway is unlike any engine I've ever seen before. Plus, all the rolling stock here is different, too. I mean, seriously, look at the caboose over there. <laughs> well, wait, what did you call that? Caboose? Philip? Folks around these parts call that a brake fan. Uh, are you sure? Because that looks like a caboose to me. Yeah, we call it that, but they don't call it that. Why don't you tell me what those are? Flat cars. Flatbeds. Box cars. Vans. The engines soon found themselves deeply invested in an in-depth conversation about the intriguing oh. parallels of railway lingo, but it was becoming um, apparent that Philip had Philip. forgotten something. Philip. I'm running late, Philip. Don't worry, Molly. I'll handle this. <laughs> Holy <laughs> cow, catcher! What was that? <laughs> Thanks, Bear. You're welcome. Philip, I'm glad you've made a new friend, but could you please get back to work? Oh, of course! Uh, Molly! Uh, yeah, sorry to keep you waiting. <laughs> well, that's it, then. I gotta head off to the lumber yard. One of the few places with reinforced rails that can handle this American dream right here. Aw, I'll miss you, Hank. You'll have to come around sometime. You need to see how well I can shunt cut. I, I, sorry, I, uh, sorry, I mean, uh, trucks around. <laughs> Hank was very happy to meet an energetic little engine from his home state, but did not think much of his encounter. However, the next day, he was very surprised that Philip was at the station and very keen to talk to Hank again. Hank, I want to be a big, strong engine like you. Do you have any advice on how to be so incredible? <laughs> Just be yourself, Philip. It's all you ever have to be. That's good advice. It's clear you may be stronger than me, but I bet I'm faster than you! We should have a race across the yard, or the island even one day, if we can get away with it. I'm sorry, Philip, but I have to mosey on back to the lumber yard again. Some other time? How's that sound? Oh, Hank! Hank felt rather torn. He did not expect Philip to be so disappointed. As he returned to work, Ironically, as the light engine down the main line, 
he felt a strange sort of accountability weighing on him. Well, shucks. I wish I could be there for the little guy. Someone's got to take him under their wing. Be a good role model, that kind of thing. Hank clanked rather loudly as he puffed down the line. He felt a strain, and then soon found he could go no further. What's happened? Ugh, I feel so sore. Ugh, I feel so sore. You do for maintenance, Hank. Your chassis is under a lot of stress. You can run on these rails fine with your wheel conversion, but it wears down your parts a little faster than the other engines. You're heavy, big guy. Dang load and gauge! I knew it'd catch up with me sooner or later. Oh, it makes me miss the days when my wheels were further apart and the track bed wasn't begging for mercy as I went over it. We better have found for help. We got a call from up the line. Hank's damaged, and we need an engine to push him onto a siding. This chassis might be too vulnerable to make it to the works. We'll need to find a means to whisk him away safely. Hank's stuck? Let me help! I can help! I'm so helpful! I can get there quickly, that's for sure! Are you sure you're strong enough? Well, there's only one way to find out! Little Philip scurried to the rescue and soon found where Hank was stranded on the main line. Hank! Hank! Don't worry, I'm here to rescue you! Philip, I appreciate it, but I'm ugh, in a lot of pain right now, so... Whoa, whoa, whoa! Now, time for a push! PUSH! Careful! Careful! <laughs> Philip, please, you're embarrassing both of us. And the ground is shifting. Phew! Did you move at all, or...? I think I almost budged. Wow, that's pretty impressive, eh, Hank? I must be super strong for my size. Uh, Are you impressed? I mean, I'm impressed, but I'd be even more impressed Philip. with myself if you were impressed. Philip! Yes, Hank? Uh, I'm down! Hank! Oh no, oh no, oh no! Are you okay? It was safe to assume that the situation had not improved. Hank was now stranded, damaged, and derailed. The K-4 was swiftly rescued and was hauled away to the works to be mended, but Philip felt terrible about the whole ordeal. Although he had done his best to help, he did feel very responsible. I wish there was something I could do to let him know I'm sorry. Me too, Philip. But you can't go down the main line, though. You have to stay in the yard. And uh, now, wait just a minute! Rest easy, my friend. The engineers have plenty of new parts for you. Thanks, Vic. I appreciate it. Also, you have a message. A message? Yes, a letter in fact. One that required a special delivery. Yeah, here you go, chap. Read these words with your face. Dear, Dear Hank, I'm sorry about your accident. I just wanted to help! More importantly, I hope you are repaired soon. You're stupendous! And I wish I was as strong as you. I'm faster though. <laughs> Best wishes, your friend sincerely regards. Get well soon, Philip. Anyone got any paper? And so, for the next few weeks, the men at the works and Philip's crew sent letters back and forth, keeping the engines up to date on the day's events. Dear Hank, I'm helping out a big yard near the port. The diesels usually work here, but I see Stafford around sometimes. It's really neat. Wish you were here. Trouble is, the curves are too tight for big engines. Dear Philip, you won't believe it, but Crovens Gate works as Netflix. Kevin asked Paul the mechanic if he wanted to chill, and Paul threw a wrench at him. <laughs> Dear Hank, I raced a rabbit on the way to the yard today, and you know what? It had the nerve to throw the race and scamper into a hole. So basically, I'm retiring undefeated. I hope you've had a nice day. Dear Philip, I hope you're well. I'm feeling much better. I think with a stronger chassis, I shouldn't have these pains anymore. Donald and Douglas are still here, but they seem pretty entertained. For them, I bet it felt like ages since they've been out and about. Hank and Philip stayed firm friends 
whether near or far, thanks to their special form of communication. It just goes to show that what's usually weighing on you comes from within. And with a little creativity, that weight can be transformed into something that outweighs distance, separation, and time.